The Dark Ages. From the very start of this challenge, this was the world that I feared the most. For a challenge run with no sun producing plants, this world will surely be impossible. A lot of you in my comments said that the Dark Ages would be the end of this challenge, and some of you even had the balls to suggest that I would need to cheat and use a sunflower. Just the thought of that sickens me to my core. I'm not changing the rules up just to make things easy. I will be beating the Dark Ages with just 75 sun and a dream. Now obviously we're going to need to get a bit sweaty for this one. Just like a millennial who spent the last two decades with a mobile phone pressed firmly against his scrotum in his skinny jeans, you'll be seeing a lot of bright red nuts. But just trust it's vital to the process. But that's enough stalling. It's time to take on my bigger challenge yet. Day 1 is normally where the game will demonstrate its world gimmick, but the gimmick this time around is just you're deprived of sun, and the tombs from Egypt are back, but this time they give you a little allowance. This little feature is the sole reason why this world is theoretically possible without a sun producer. As long as the first zombie spawns on or adjacent to a sun grave, I can use all of my spendable sun on an exploding nut to clear the graves and get more sun. Each grave gives me enough to buy two more exploding nuts. This is great and all, but I still have to use my extremely limited resources to actually kill the zombies. I spent about half an hour on the first level of this world. But in retrospect, looking back over the gameplay, I had it like the first time round if I had just used any of my plant food and cracked open this last sun team. This was only the first level of the world, and I was already sweating bricks over just cone heads. It's not looking very good. Day 2 was pretty easy. The sun tombs respawn, so I actually have a constant source of sun. I'm not really sure if they keep respawning or if they're finite, but looking up information like that isn't really my style. This level's probably a mycophile's wet dream, since it introduced two of the raddest mushrooms in the game. The sun shroom, which for my money is the second coolest sun producing plant in the game, but you'd need to be a real schmuck to use one of those. And the puff shroom. Little Puffy got nerfed in the transition between Plants vs Zombies 1 and 2, but in return got one of the most fun plant food effects in the game. Also, is it just me, or does this guy seem much more fitting of the name Puff Shroom? I don't know, it's just more... puffy to me. I always confuse the two. Huh. Well, I guess there it is. Well, over 100 levels, 7 videos, and 23,000 words in, we have arrived at our first truly impossible level. No Sun Tombs means we have but one Exploder Nut to clear the entirety of Day 3. He's pretty busted but he's not quite content farm thumbnail strong. This looks pretty bleak. But you know, we have been here before. When we faced the otherwise impossible freezing winds of the frostbite caves, my nuts did not buckle or yield when faced with the cruelty of this world. We adapted, we overcame, we leveraged our YouTube success to bully a small indie company into making us a custom OP nut. So once more, I wrote an email to the Dons themselves. Dearest Popcap, I hope this letter reaches you in due time. I see you're in urgent need of some good publicity after the launch of the mulch you call sequel to our beloved Plant vs Zombies, and I am in need of any way whatsoever to keep my nut challenge going. Make me a nut that can shine light upon the melancholy of this dark age without making it too easy for me. Yours truly, Big Nut Small P. They responded almost instantly, agreeing to make me a second and final custom nut, on the condition that I fund the art myself as they fired their entire digital art team during the mass games industry layoffs. I simply replied with a gif and reminded them that they are in no position to parlay with me after this. They reluctantly sent me the download file to my brand new plant, the Sun Nut. This bad boy generates just enough sun to emulate the natural sun production of past worlds and I'll only be using one of them to make sure I keep things challenging. And if it dies, I'll be starting the level over. And of course, I'll only be using it for this world. Anyway, with our new ally, we cleared day 3 with no problem. Day 4 is a conveyor belt level, which would be annoying if it didn't introduce one of the best to ever do it. I fucking love the Hypno Shroom. In the last video, I forgot to give you guys nut facts on the conveyor belt levels, which was because I was just having too much fun with the far future, and didn't mind the gimmick levels at all, so I didn't feel the need for nut facts, but now I'm back to being a deeply hateful person. Did you know that during the Dark Ages, it was believed that everyone had three nuts inside of them? One is evil, it is anger, sin and prejudice. The second is good, it is purity, faith and kindness. The last nut is the one I put inside of you when you subscribe to my YouTube channel. So. Do with that information as you will. Day 5 introduces us to the first unique zombie in the world, which is kind of odd since we're now a full quarter of the way through the game, but I suppose it's better than being frontloaded with all the new zombies and being left with nothing new for the entire world. The Jesters are a notoriously tricky zombie that returns projectiles, rendering like 70% of the plants in the game useless. Lucky for us, this guy doesn't phase nuts at all, so we don't need to worry about him. In fact, I remember hearing somewhere that the peanut was designed as a counter to the Jester. Hell no! Hell no! Man, the peanut is just so perfectly bad at everything it does. This day was pretty easy overall though. Day 6 is a plan your defense, and as per tradition, I start with peanuts, but I can't just spam them this time around because of the jesters, so the logical next step is to spend 800 sun on two coconut cannons. 
Normally, this would be kind of ass, but in this situation, they're actually completely worthless. As the Jesters send back the coconut blast, Kung Fu Panda style. I still beat this one first try because I had some leftover pocket money to spend on exploding nuts. Day 7 introduces the second unique zombie, the Night Zombie. This guy's a buckethead zombie that maybe the Foom Shroom can penetrate? That's the only thing that I can tell might be different between the two. Probably some different stats, but you really can't tell from just playing. This day was extremely standard. Just like gimmickless zombies walking down the lanes. What the good old days. Day 8 doesn't let us pick our plants. Did you know that pistachio ice cream is really yummy? Day 9 is a really cool gimmick level. These random elixirs spawn that makes the zombies either faster or stronger and they can snack multiple times. It's a really cool idea and honestly it's one of my favourite gimmick levels, but the exploder that just kind of stomps this level. It's really unfortunate. Did you know that screenwriter Vince Gilligan of Breaking Bad fame has a masterful ability to imbue every minor detail of a scene with a deeper meaning that reveals a lot about his characters that otherwise is never verbally spoken by characters on screen? This got me thinking. What was the importance of the scene where Mike Ehrmantraut sits at his window all night eating pistachios? Maybe the tough and brittle outer shell that protects the soft delicious inner nut represents Mike himself. Or maybe it's a statement about pistachios being an old person food. But I personally think that old people might struggle to open pistachio shells, especially the ones that are basically sealed and you need to really use your teeth to open them. What a talented director. Day 11 is the grand arrival of what I predict will have been the hardest zombie in the entire challenge to deal with, the wizard zombie. This robed bellend counters the nut brigade so hard it's not even funny. As you've probably noticed, the exploding nut is carrying this world pretty hard at the moment. But the wizard outright disables them, meaning not only do they not kill zombies, the zombies that they were stalling just waltz right through them. That's tough on its own. But what really makes these guys the scourge of this world is that they don't eat an exploding nut if you drop it on their head, which means you need to put them next to the wizard and hope that another zombie detonates it and kills the wizard. Except you can't do that either because the wizard just polymorphs the nut. The only way that I can stop a wizard is with an infinite barrier or a gum nut. The gum nut's ideal as long as there's only one wizard on screen, but it doesn't help late game when there's multiple. The barrier works much better in general, but it doesn't kill them, so I need to place an exploder nut behind them, except you can't do that either because the infinite barrier dies way faster than the exploder nut, so my only real option to kill a wizard is with peanuts. But this is double fact, because not only does this only work for a single lane, most of the time they don't even kill the wizard because some other prick is blocking them. So more often than not, I'm forced to use a plant food. So in total, I need 225 sun and 2 plant food to kill a single wizard. And the final wave has 5 of them. It's so fucked. The wizards are so difficult to beat that it changes how you play the game. You're no longer playing to win. You're playing the level over and over and over again to learn the exact techniques and the exact layouts of each wave and where you need to pre-place plants and where you need to hold your plant foods. This level is the only level that I think tops day 3 of Egypt. These are my favourite types of level, because the feeling after beating them is unmatched. Let me run you through the final solution of this level after running it back for 2 straight hours. First of all, the sun that needs to be placed in this exact tile so it draws the least aggro from the wizards. As soon as the sun that is transmogrified in this level, it's over. Then we place 2 exploder nuts to clear all of the sun tiles. If we pre-place a bum nut right in this spot, we can gum the wizard down before it zaps anything, and we can just use a peanut plant food to clear it. The next issue is two wizards that spawn together. We can give up a lawnmower to clear one, and only after the first wizard has dropped, we can use a gummy pea shooter combo to clear the other. After cleaning up the chaff with exploding nuts, we have two more wizards to deal with. This time we use our only plant food on a sun nut to get just enough sun for two gum nuts and two pea shooters. For the last wave, I'll be totally honest, I don't know what I did to beat it. This exploding nut normally goes off just before the final wave, but this time round it went off at the perfect time. I just don't know what I did to make that happen. I then blunder everything I could possibly mess up but get carried by lawnmowers and a final gun nut. This level was exhausting. If I wasn't streaming it, I probably would have written it off as impossible. This was 100% the hardest level of the game so far. Day 12 was almost as hard as the last one. We need to protect 5 little fellas that are actively working against us. I spent an hour in this level before calling it quits and going to bed for the day. I promised everyone that this would be the first world that I streamed in one sitting, but I can't believe I waited for the perfect world for it to take like 12 hours for it to clear. After a nice little combat kip, I managed to beat the level in just 20 minutes. Mostly out of pure luck. Funnily enough, the wizards were actually really helpful in this one. I mean, they kicked my teeth in for most of it. But the first time I was able to get to the final wave, I had the genius idea to just not do anything and let the wizards zap all the puff shrooms and then walk themselves to death. I'm pretty proud of this probably fairly obvious strategy. Shadow Wizard Money Gang, we love casting spells. Day 13's a conveyor belt level, but wait. This one is the peanut tutorial, meaning we have infinite peanuts to clear with. This could be the first nutsable conveyor belt level. 
This has to be a joke, right? They must have made the peanut useless on purpose. Why is he unusable in his own level? God, the peanut's so bad and I just love him so much for it. Day 14 must have been the most frustrating thing imaginable to watch live. I just could not wrap my head around the sunbeam. In this level you need to generate 5,000 suns, but your only means of doing so are the sun graves and the sunbeams. This level went on for about 40 minutes and it was just Twitch chat explaining to me how the sunbeam works and then me either putting it on the flimsiest zombie possible or just forgetting to use it outright. I know this one must have drove my Twitch chat viewers to mental collapse, but I swear I'm entertaining. Please go follow me on Twitch, I love streaming. Day 15 was another plan your defense stage. Chat requested I do the checker pattern exploder nut strategy, but I messed up the pattern and it was murder on the eyes. These exploder nuts do virtually nothing as they all got sheeped. Then just as I thought it was over, I decided to waste all of my plant food on a single gum nut and uh, yeah, I guess that'll do it. I thought this was a pretty funny way to win. Day 16 is the chivalrous arrival of the king himself. These zombies are irrelevant to us as the exploder nut wipes out knights like shites, but I think they're actually really cool. I can definitely see them being trouble for normal playthroughs though. This level was another slog. Getting over all the wizards just takes so many retries that the difficulty is definitely losing its charm now. Just as I was starting to get frustrated, I discovered a little tech that changes the rest of this run. I can finally deal with the pesky wizards by predicting where the kings will be, so they land on the exploded nuts, killing them instantly. This means that the last waves containing 5 wizards are no longer just a lawnmower check. It does take a lot for my goldfish memory to remember where the kings are coming in for though, so it's not foolproof. I was warned by chat that day 17 was a noob trap. I assume they mean that people get tricked into placing their plants too greedily to get all the tombstones, but chat's nuts must not have the same destructive loads as mine because I cleared the tombstones very quickly. It's kind of sad, but a zombie that has all the boosts and has been knighted still gets one shot by the exploder nut. I think this is a really charming gimmick though. Day 18 doesn't let us pick our plants, but it does give us the peanut, but once again he is rendered useless by the jester. The jester has not been the challenge for me at all, they just make my peanuts feel sad. Day 19 is the last nutable level because this world's crazy short. And this level is a fantastic finale because we really had to pull out all the stops. We have to protect some magnet shrooms, which, side note, it's always disturbed to me that the mushroom underneath the magnet doesn't have a face. It gives me I have no mouth and I must scream vibes. This level took every trick I had. Edging zombies with walnuts, remembering that I have the premature lawnmower launcher, pre-placing gum nuts and using kings to blow up exploder nuts. In fact, while I was attempting to do this level, someone in chat drew out an amazing diagram of all the techniques. This is really cool. After the quickest one and a half hours of my life, we slay a dragon and question why we didn't get this awesome imp earlier, and we bring the world to a close. This was yet another fantastic world. I need more time to reflect, but I think I might have actually enjoyed this one more than the far future. The real MVP of this world was Twitch chat for keeping me sane throughout all the crazy difficult levels. Well that's all for this one. I think for my next upload I'm going to do a video on a different game, or maybe still play Plant vs Zombies but do a different format. I want to cleanse my palate a bit before going into the last few worlds of the game. I can't believe I'm this far in already. And again, thank you all so much for all the support on my channel. It's just out of this world. You know the drill now. Subscribe, follow me on Twitch, blah blah blah. Thank you all very much for watching. Cheers.